Hi everyone, so I'm finally getting time to sit down and film a video talking about Teddy. Um, some of you have probably been following my Instagram and things like that where I've posted about him etc. Um, so yeah, like the title says, it turns out that he has a rare genetic disorder. So I believe that he has Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It does exist in people as well. So I guess I should get to the start about how I came to the conclusion that there was something wrong with him. Um, so when he was about seven weeks old, he had this really, what I would have called an amazing and unusual Rex coat on him. For being so young, he was really, really curly all the way. I remember saying, I was describing it to other breeders, like his neck hair was so thick and coarse and curly. Um, the best way to describe it was a bit like a Brillo pad. <laughs> and I was like, there's something about this boy, there's something about him. Um, I think I've made this really, really good Rex. And I got really quite excited because I was like, I think, oh my God, I've made this amazing Rex. I had so many plans, like, oh my God, I'll breed them to so many um, girls and pass on these good genes, etc. Um, he does have a very short head and I was like, oh, that's fine. I'll breed that out, you know, I can, I can fix that. So anyway, I kept him. Then while doing intros, he took a rather um, bad wound along his side. He's actually, that's actually the kind of like, the remnants of it, the, the baldness and the scar. Um, so he took a really bad wound during intros and it was so bad that I ended up um, getting medical intervention so he did get stitched. Now normally I don't get vets involved with um, kind of bite wounds, lacerations, because although they look bad, they heal very, very quickly. But his was really, really big and it was actually turned out there was two, ba two wounds on him. So he did get stitched up. Now about two hours after coming home, from the vets, um, the biggest wound of the two, which probably was about two inches long, um, it burst open. Now I of course cursed him for pulling his stitches out and I was so angry, I was like what a waste of money, I've just spent all this money on it, I can't afford to you know, like spend it again to get you restitched, etc. So after having that problem, um, I didn't really think much of it, I just thought you know, he's picked his stitches out. It's very rare that it happens, but you know, here we are. Then later on, he ended up cutting like open his arm. And it wasn't just like in a normal scratch, it was like, you know, the skin had pulled open. And he was only living with his brother at this point, because I separated him after the fight. So he was living with his brother. Um, and I couldn't work out, you know, had his brother bitten him? But I was like, that's really weird. They're still kittens. I wouldn't have expected any, you know, strong dominance fights at this age. Um, and I was having a rant about it to another breeder and she said to me, do you think there's something wrong with them? And you know, basically, like, I think in the back of my mind, I had kind of thought to myself that there might be something wrong with them. And I was like, yes, I think so. And she said, I think you need to talk to this other breeder about some rats that she had um, that had some something wrong with them, which turned out to be the EDS. Um, so after basically speaking to her, it was like pieces of a puzzle fell into place. Everything started lining up. Like everything she was telling me about her rats, I was like, yes, yes, yes. Like, like he was just t Teddy was just ticking all the boxes. Um, so some of the the things that you notice about them, he's not really got them right now, but his back feet often swell up for absolutely no reason, like they would just swell up. I remember one night looking back at pictures I'd taken of them during the day and I looked and I thought, oh, that foot's rather swollen. And I went outside basically to check that he didn't have anything wrapped around it and the foot looked perfectly fine. And again, at the time I just thought, weird, you know, nothing of it. But of course, hearing about this now, I'm like, that was one of the symptoms. So yes, yeah, so his back legs swell up. Then there's the excess skin. So you can see there's quite a lot of flappy, skin on like he's very there's like all this extra skin and it's all very loose so that's another sign of it the short head which i had just put down to you know some poor genes that i would fix with time um a short head is also a sign of it and i'd also seen someone notice um saying some of more of their eyes are more almond shaped as well um that can also be our sign of it so the interesting thing was that this other breeder had only been breeding smooth rats and the way that they noticed something was wrong with theirs was that they had kittens that had kind of weird wavy crinkly coats and obviously in a pairing with only smooth rats you would not get rats that are rex they should not have crinkly coats so it was 
obvious there was something wrong with him. In his case, of course, with him being a Rex, what the gene has done is make him extra extra curly. So I thought I had an amazing Rex rat, but actually it's just the way that the gene is modifying his coat. So it's making it seem extra extra curly. And once I had this in mind, I remember thinking back to the brother of Teddy. And he was a smooth cinnamon Dumbo. And I always remember looking at that one as a baby and thinking, your coat's rather weird. But again, the, like, the pieces weren't there to fall into place. I just thought, you know, you've got an extra fluffy baby coat. Didn't think anything of it. Until I looked back at a picture that his new home had sent me of them during introductions. And it was a picture of him lying in the cage. And I could see clearly from that picture that his smooth coat was not as smooth as what it should be. I could see the faint crinkles. I could see the faint lines in it. And I was, I was so sad at that point because I was so frustrated that I'd found this out now. Because if I had known that sooner, I wouldn't have owned that rat, um, knowing there was something wrong with him. So I felt very sad for that. And I know that the pet homes had some issues with him getting, you know, sliced open in intros. And when I say sliced open, I'm not meaning that other rats are being aggressive. Um, another sign of this, or another symptom, sorry, of this condition means that they have skin that is super stretchy and it splits so easily. So, you know, for example, that cut he got on his leg probably came from just roughhousing with his brother. Like, there was no malice in it. His skin is just so fine and so easy to break that a little bit of roughhousing play and he splits open. Um, and I remember speaking to the vet who'd actually stitched him up and I brought up that I thought he had this condition and she said oh that would probably explain why when I tried to stitch him like his skin was so kind of stretchy and elastic like so yeah it's all just kind of gone into place there was also a point where he was covered in scabs and I thought he had mites but looking back I don't think it, it was mites although I treated him for it I believe it was just again the the part of the disease which or, you know the problem that causes him to have just such weak thin skin it damages easily it splits easily it's that's just what's wrong with them um so yeah that's basically how i kind of found out so from what i understand it was from the litter that had it was nine born but there was six stillborn so only had it was the litter that only had three surviving so it was the three that survived two of them have it so teddy has it the one that I end up pet homing sadly has it and the sister that I kept, Sparrow, who's somewhere sleeping behind me, she does not seem to have it. Um, so this is obviously like a recessive gene that's been lurking around in the line and has finally obviously showed its head. So where do I go from here? Um, in terms of Teddy, there's very little I can do to keep him safe. The only thing I'm doing at the moment is I'm keeping him just with his brother. I'm not daring to risk intros again because of how easily he can get hurt. Um, so he's just gonna live with his brother and I've actually got him in the hutch down there because I believe the hutch is like the safest place for him you know they're fairly you can't really catch him on anything it's nice and secure it's not very high um, and that's really all I can do um, of all the other rats I heard about with this condition they were all culled or euthanized later on um, in their life and I mean, Teddy might get to that stage. If he gets to the stage where he's constantly splitting his skin open, if he's constantly getting wounds, if wounds won't heal, then I will end up euthanizing them because that's not a quality of life for him. Um, I mean, as I said, I'm doing my best to keep him as safe as I can. And I really don't know what his lifespan's going to be like, like at all. I don't know. And very obviously, he will not be bred from. In terms of going forward, what I'm going to have to do is... I'm just going to be very careful breeding going forward and basically just try and breed out of my line. Um, I did end up posting about this on the NFRS forums and got another breeder who had this issue and she bred through it. So you can eventually breed it out. Um, I really hope I don't get any more. I feel like it's going to be a situation where I probably would. But if I do, um, it's a matter of basically either euthanizing all the affected ones or I would have to be willing to keep and take care of you know all the affected ones because I definitely would not ever pet home um, them if I knew this was what was wrong with them. So yes, that is sadly what I think is wrong with Teddy. He is a super sweet boy as you can see, he's absolutely lovely. And I mean I'm, I'm disappointed that I, won't, I don't have this amazing Rex that I thought I had for breeding but all I can do now is basically just give him as good a life as I can for however long he's here. I hope he gets a long life with me, but 
there's only so much I can do. There's obviously nothing we can do to treat them. It's just a matter of taking care of them as best we can. So if you've got any questions, pop them down below. I will try my best to answer. Um, but as I said, there's not like a whole lot of information out there for this. So it's just what I read on the forums. Um, I mean, I'll try my best to answer. So thank you for watching and me and Teddy will see you in another video, I'm sure.